Hi everyone, welcome to Mother Industrialist live show where we talk about entrepreneurship, parenting, and life. I'm the host Kenneth, and today uh, I have this awesome, awesome lady, and I'm so um she's really, really ex um really here and may really make time for me, and also uh really excited to bring her on, and um today has been a great day. Uh, yesterday I had a workshop, my first workshop of two thousand eighteen. And it has been a success. Um, um, upcoming, I'll be running a few workshop. Uh, every month, I'll be there will be two workshop locally, and really, really excited. So, um, this lady, I knew her through Facebook, um, through recommendation of some friends, and um, they have been really good, connected us together, and the things that she's doing, the business that she's doing, uh, really struck me really strong because I've not have not seen this business before in, in in Singapore particularly and really excited and when I got connected with her um she shared a lot of tips um on how to stay happy uh stay happy healthy and active so I'm really uh so honored to bring her on and uh she's the owner of Monflix which is mother and athlete at the same time and she's a adventure mother ambassador she's also a coach she's a mother of three beautiful children and without further ado, let us welcome Karen. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hi thanks how for are making you doing? Time. I'm doing good. You? How about you? Wonderful. Thank you wow. for having me today. No problem. Thanks for making time. Uh, the, uh and and uh, agreed to be interviewed to come uh to come on my live show. And really glad uh that you can make time and also um it is a night time over at your end, right? It is. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, kind of bedtime for everybody here. Okay. So I can... <laughs> so thanks a lot for making time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a while. So um, we, before Have we kick start the show, uh, there's a tradition which is uh, there's a question of the day that every guest get to post out to the audience and also to the next guest. So are you ready with the question of the day being posted by the previous guest before we kick start the show? I'll do my best. I'm ready. Okay. So the question of the day from the previous guest is, if you have the chance to have any superpower in the world, what would you, what would it be, and why would you want this superpower? So um, you got a question, or you want me to repeat again? No, I think I got it. Okay, so uh, spend some time to think about it while I go on to Facebook Live to see if we are live successfully and if our audio is good. Is it good for you? I'm perfect. Okay, let me just check. Okay, just to make sure that we are live successfully and can hear. Okay, okay I hear my my voice. Okay, let me let me see. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, good. I can hear you loud and clear. So Karen, are you ready with your answer to the question of the day? I think I am actually. Okay. Yeah. Give it to us. <laughs> so if I could have one superpower, I think I'd like to stop time sometimes, oh. but I would like to be able to keep on doing what I want to do. Like sometimes i just want a few more extra minutes to play guitar or go for a really long run hmm. and so i wish i could just kind of stop time and then do all the things i want to do and then okay. go right back into time and do all the things that i need to do <laughs> <laughs> you know i just yes. wish i like, time wow. sometimes i just wish i had a little bit more time so if i could just stop regular hmm. time and do what it is i need to do and then push a button and then it all keeps on going and Wow, well, that, that, I would kind of be my superpower. That 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 is so cool. I I guess that that's the first time I hear that someone wanted a, a a superpower that is to stop time, which is um which is pretty interesting because everyone have uh have only twenty four hours and you have if you have the ability to stop time, basically you have more time to do more things, and that is what uh what a mother would would love to to have, right? Yeah, you know I because. It would we could sleep a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those little extra things I would, mm. I'd still like to do. Yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good. Thanks for your answer, and and it's really really a very uh, awesome answer. So uh, now we can kickstart with the show. 
Okay. So right. before we start, um, maybe Karen, can you uh, do a short introduction of yourself because the audience and um, out there may not uh, be familiar with you. You can uh, maybe introduce a, a short, do a short introduction about yourself and also what were you doing prior to you starting your own business and what is your background like and where were you from? Where are you from? Okay, so I grew up in Nova Scotia in Canada. Nova Scotia is a small province um, in eastern Canada. It's surrounded by ocean. It's really beautiful, um, very rural. And so there's a lot of forests and a lot of rivers and a lot of lakes. And so I grew up very active and very much outdoors. So that was kind of my early part of my life. And then I actually went on to study forestry and wildlife. Mm. And so that was my degree. And at the same time, I started to get really involved in mountain bike racing and I loved mountain bike racing. So in the summer times I would do, I would research birds for when we go to the forest and we'd count birds and then oh. I would come home and I would get on a mountain bike and I would train for mountain biking. Wow. And so that was kind of my twenties. And then after a while, the mountain biking kind of took over and then I just started racing full time. Uh, I was a member of the Canadian national team for a little while. Wow. And then, yeah. And then had three babies and moved <laughs> to Oregon with my, my husband. We had our first child. Mm. We moved to Oregon. Um, my husband's also a forest ecologist. Mm. So he now works at the university and we had two more babies. <laughs> and so for a while I was just taking care of the kids. Mm. I was still trying to race um, quite a bit. And, but also trying to support my husband while he got his, um, he was a professor and is a professor and kind of going through that tenure process. So mm. just making sure that he had everything that he need, he needed for his job and that the kids were happy and we we're all settling in. So that was, that's kind of was my background before yeah. I started the business. Okay. And then when it was time to put the, my third child in school and I was going to have a bit more time on my hands. Hmm. Um, my friends in my little play group said, you know, you've done a good job of staying active while you've had kids. Hmm. And it would be really neat if you would show other moms how you've done this and, and kind of take some of those fun little things that I, I figured out with my own kids, how to stay active myself and how to keep them active and share that with other moms. And they suggested that I started a business. Mm. And so that's how mom fleets started. <laughs> <laughs> that, which is very interesting. And, and, and maybe you can share um, how did this whole idea comes about? Although your friend was asking, uh, was telling you that um, asking you to share with more mothers, how you can stay healthy and stay um, active at the same time. How did this whole idea come and the name especially? Well, so I had always, it had kind of started as a joke. Like, <laughs> you know, I was an athlete before I had kids. I was an athlete. Like that was kind of my identity. And then I became a mom and it was getting harder and harder to be a full-time mountain bike racer. Like <laughs> jumping on a plane with three kids and going to a race was, mm. was you know, really difficult. So I started racing a little bit less or racing a little bit more locally and being a mom a lot more. And I felt like those two personalities kind of merged <laughs> and I became, I wasn't all an athlete and I wasn't all a mother. I was mm. a mom fleet. So it, it started yeah, as a I joke. All both. <laughs> exactly. It's just, it kind of, what happens when you start meshing those two things that I, I love so much together. Yes, yes. You know, like, like how, so. how uh, mompreneurs come about, which is mothers, moms, and entrepreneur that combines together become mompreneur. <laughs> right, because I think, you know, moms really, I see, I believe that we really carry our job as mothers very heavily. And I, and I understand that dads do too, but mm. you know, my kids are so much of my life that it, it's hard to uncouple anything else I do from my children because they're mm. kind of always in, they're always on my mind Definitely. and and their needs are always kind of the first thing. Like when I wake up, it's like, how am I going to meet their needs before <laughs> I meet any other needs? So I do feel like we do kind of meld whatever it is we're doing in our lives yes. with being a mom. Yeah. And, and, and that also brings us to uh, the, our topic of the day, which is how to stay active and healthy after being a mom. Because like you have shared the challenges of like the lifestyle have changed 
and for you personally, you have three children, and it mm-hmm. must be really tough for you to to juggle and also to manage at the same time because um, uh, having children is like physically draining, emotionally draining, mentally draining, and maybe the the amount of sleep you're having, because I believe that as an athlete you need more rest, right? And and as a mom, right. you may need to breastfeed. You may need to wake up in the middle of the night to feed them and all that stuff. How how did you manage all that? Yeah. So and I think that's what my friends found really interesting because it was never okay for me to not exercise. Like I I knew I needed to exercise, and it didn't have to look exactly the same as before I had kids. Hmm. Um. So what I would do often is put them in my really nice stroller. I had this, um, it's a Canadian product actually called Chariot that Thule now owns, um, mm-hmm. a Thule Chariot. And it um, either attached to my bike or it became a running stroller. And it was mm-hmm. fully enclosed and fully waterproof because in Oregon it rains mm-hmm. a lot. So I could put them in there and they even have an infant sling. Oh. So I would put my baby in this little infant sling and it would rock back and forth and the oh. stroller had shocks on it. Oh wow. And they would just rock back and forth <laughs> and go to sleep. And so I would plan um outings with the kids. Like maybe mm. we go to the library to their story time. And it was at 10 o'clock. So I'd get them into the stroller at about 9 30 and I would run. It was five kilometers to the library. So I would get a five kilometer run in. Mm. I would take them out and we'd do story time. Then we'd go to the store and get bagels for lunch or take a little lunch and eat in the park. And then I would run home on their next nap cycle. So I would just plan the day so that they were never in the stroller for more than 30 minutes, mm. probably. And then and then as the older ones started getting older, mm. they had those little strider bikes that they just, or the little run bikes where ah, you okay. run and kick them. Mm, yep. So I would always have one of those stuffed in the back for my older kids. So if they were they had more energy and I had another one napping the littlest kid the, or the biggest kid could get out and play on the bike mm. somewhere quiet. And we would run for a little bit together. And then when they got tired, I put them back in the stroller and we'd run home. And so that way I started teaching my children how to exercise, um, ah. <laughs> making sure the other child had sleep and then making sure that I wasn't just stuck at home all day, like waiting for one kid to have a, their nap while the other child had too much energy and <laughs> and so the, it just kept on growing with that when the biggest kid got big enough then mm-hmm. they went on a two-wheel bike and then I would run beside them and be able to hold their bike and mm-hmm. stop them and teach them the rules of the road but be like actually be able to be hands-on to grab mm-hmm. them and teach them and make sure they didn't get into trouble for their first few years on a bike mm-hmm. so that was the next day were you, training on the bike? Them. were you on the bike when they, they are on the bike too or you were running a lot so that's when I kind of started changing from a mountain biker to a runner so I do mm. a lot more running now because it was just so handy to be able to get my hands on the kids when mm. I needed to and if we were going to go longer um or if I only had one baby like when my when my older kids would go to mm. preschool and then I'd have a big window and I knew most of that window was going to be a baby napping. <laughs> then sometimes I would ride everybody to preschool, drop them off, mm. and then um, and then go for a ride with my littlest kid. Wow! And while they napped, so I would just get my mountain bike workout in um, while that while the other the littlest one was sleeping. Mm. So those well, were some of the things that I did to just keep myself active while mm. my kids were little. Okay. So what what um, is the age difference uh, between your three children? Uh, they're each, they're two and a half years apart. So wow. okay. yeah, I had my last baby when my first baby was five and then mm. the middle was two and a half years old. So, so how, it was kind of that. How are they now? Mm. They're 12, mm. nine and seven now. Wow. So you have been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> for 12 years. Wow. Yeah. And the, the cool thing, I, I've got to say the the really neat thing that we're seeing now is our 12 year old is a really strong, healthy girl. Like she's, she runs and she bikes and she's, she's really in, good at school and, and she's carrying these habits into her life now. Mm-hmm. So um, I would say we're, we're just at the point where we can see that these habits that we've given them early mm-hmm. are starting to transfer now. Mm-hmm. It's really neat. So he's like, and she notices. Yeah. 
Well, and then just that early childhood training, like that consistent training, like we move our bodies every day. We don't like, you don't need to be a racer. You don't need to be a world-class athlete. We just, we move every day. And she, she notices it. Like, she's like, I feel better on the days that I exercise. Mm. So, and that's really neat to watch her make those connections now. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So why, why, um, like for you, you have been doing it for 12 years. So why is it that it's, uh, you felt that it was very important for mothers to stay active and healthy at the same time? Is there any particular reason uh, for yourself? And that's why you want to share this with even more mothers out there. Yeah. I mean, uh, one of the, even beyond my experience, there was this book that came out uh, a few years ago called Spark by John Reedy, and he's a Harvard psychologist. And he makes a, the most eloquent arguments for why humans need to exercise and, and the effects on our mental health and the, not just the effects on our physical health, but it's really the effects on our, our mental health that are really interesting to me. Mm. And I definitely noticed it myself. I didn't always exercise consistently when I was younger. That happened in my early 20s when I met my husband, mm. who's my husband now. And he got me exercising every day. And I just oh. noticed how much better I started feeling over time, mm. how much more stable I started feeling, how much more I was able to handle in university, how much um, I was able to even handle my workload better. Even mm. though I was taking two hours out a day to train for mountain biking, mm. I was so much more effective when I went back to work and so much more um, efficient mm. when I went to work. And, and now this is actually being clinically proven mm. um, by psychologists. Like, and, and so as I started working with, my, with other mothers, like first in my play group and then like starting to decide to make this a business, mm. I've, I've definitely seen it over and over again. People feel better, people feel more steady they their self-confidence increases and and then i even notice that they start dreaming bigger and mm. that they'll come up with a goal and as they work towards that goal physically mm. um the other pieces of their lives really start coming together and and that's when i i knew i really needed to continue doing this so so you, you were saying that because you see the huge difference in them especially uh, before they start exercising and after they're exercising and everything um, in the mental wellness for them is it became better because they are able to focus, they'll be able to be motivated uh, at times and, and they are much uh, a better person and healthier person. Is that, is that what you observe and that's, is that what uh, pushes you to, to even more, uh, to empower more or, and to share with more mothers? Yeah, that's, that's it. Um, and especially, you know, uh, being a mom can be a really hard job. Mm. And it, it really means that we, we need to be able to come to the table and give it our all every day. But I think that's really hard to do if we start feeling empty mm. ourselves. Definitely. And so I think every mom needs to figure out how to fill themselves back up. And, mm. and that might not be exercise for everybody but i think it's exercise for a huge amount of people we, you go out and you walk or you run and i think most people come back from that and they've had a little bit of space in their minds and in their hearts to like kind of fill themselves back up and then they bring that back to their families and i i really love seeing what a difference that makes in people's lives so for for you uh how how long has Monflix been been around uh, and you helping mothers that means building it as a business reaching out to more people how long has it been it's been about two years hmm. so yeah so, so it's a fairly new business okay so um I, I believe that you face um parents or mothers um uh, that they, t they they would be telling you that uh because you you shared that you spend about one to two hours working out is it every day or per week I would say for me, I spend about an, like an average an hour a day. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, now I train, instead of training for mountain bike racing, I do a lot of longer trail running. Mm -hmm. um, so on the weekends, I'll do longer runs. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's not, and that's not everybody's situation. It's yeah. just my background as an elite athlete. All right. um, carrying, the, that was a big priority for me. But for most people, I think 20 minutes, 30 minutes is fine. So if mm -hmm. I've got, if I'm working with a working mom who's got a really huge schedule and yep. really lots of other priorities, I'm not getting them to run 
mm. an hour a day. That's ridiculous. Like we might just be walking for 20 minutes a day at mm. lunch break and, and finding those pockets of time that they might be able to use a little bit more effectively to bring more efficiency to mm. the rest of their day. Yeah, because you, you, you touched on the point that, uh, that I want to bring, uh, I want to ask you, which is because um, for you, you were an athlete before and now you became a mom. So the transition for you is quite natural, although uh, about, uh, about juggling the, the, the motherhood responsibility, the role of, as a mother. So how mm -hmm. is it for someone who has not, have not exercised at all and they are working mom and their schedule is really packed? Do you face like objection like, hey, uh, uh, it's not possible for me to even to squeeze, squeeze out 20 minutes? So how do you uh, help them and or how do you tackle that, that kind of objection from that? That's a great question. And, and so that's, that's kind of the process. We sit down together. And, and first of all, a mom has to want it. Um, if, they, if someone really doesn't think they have the time, they're not even going to call. But if somebody is starting to want that, like they're feeling, and that's the other thing, motherhood takes an incredible physical toll on your body. It's yeah. really hard on the body. Mm. I was really fit even through my pregnancies and it was really hard on my body on the back end. Mm. So, so a lot of people come to me, they're like, okay, my body just hurts. It feels bad. Like mm. I, things hurt and I don't want to be in pain or mm. I, they recognize that they need their body to work for a long time because they want to be there for their kids and their grandkids. Yes. So first they've got to want, they've got to want to start moving. Yeah. So then we, once they want that, then we sit down and we look at their schedule mm. and we look at the day. Is it, and so for most working moms, it might be early in the morning is their only window mm. or it might be lunchtime or it might be once they get the kids to bed. But we, we look at that and we look at who they are as a person mm. and when their natural energy levels are the highest. Mm. Some people are morning people, some people are night people, some people oh, are <laughs> afternoon people. And then we, we figure out where are, where are the 20 minute pockets. Mm -hmm. And then we might think, where, where are the places you can go walking close to work? Where are the places you can go walking close to your house? Like, mm. can you get to a natural area so you can get a little bit of breathing room? And if you don't have any of that, what are the resources you have right in your house? Like, or at your office? Like, um, there's a lot of exercises you can do if you just have enough room to lay down and stand up and stretch out. So I'll design workouts around whatever space they have and whatever time they have and then where they're starting ability wise. Hmm. So that's, that's pretty much how we start. So it's, it's really uh, understanding their lifestyle and, uh, and, and you will see how you can integrate, um, workouts or even to let them, um, be able to have space to stretch or even to do some uh, basic basic fitness I, I would say so it's to really for you is to really understand their lifestyle and also to understand their, their schedule their, their whole day uh, schedule and that's where you integrate fitness or workout into that is, is that so like, yeah that's exactly it and then the, also their passions like um i think the most important thing is to find out what the person loves to do hmm. And then to capitalize on that, because I think if you tell somebody um, to go run and they hate running, <laughs> like it's, it's not going to work for them. And so I would never tell somebody who has zero interest in running to go become a runner because it's a really efficient workout. Um, some people love yoga. Some people love, some people I love just really hard workouts. And, and so we might look for the gym closest to them. That's going to have the fitness program that, they really love. So really what I'm doing is, is sitting down idea. with a mother, finding out what she's passionate about, mm -hmm. and then finding out what are the resources around her that's going to support her in, in her ac active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then also trying to, um, once we get mom going, looking at the family dynamic and seeing mm -hmm. if we can start to bring in kids and, and her husband and, and the whole family mm -hmm. into it. If so she's interested like, in, like, in like, doing like that. The bonding or with the family to to really, as a family, to lead this healthy and, and active lifestyle, right? Exactly. Like when, once on the weekend, can you mm. go for a walk with your, your kids and your family on date night with your husband? Can mm. you guys both find something that might also like be really fun, but also be an active mm. activity? Yeah. And that's one thing that 
has really been helpful for my husband and I is just, you know, once a week or twice a month, like mm. taking a little bit of time and still doing those bike rides that we used to love to do before kids. And mm. it's still really important for us. So you're still continuing the, the things that you used to do, although you became a mom, it does not stop you from, from doing the things that you used to do, but in, 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 a, in a way that it helps to um, integrate into your motherhood, right? Exactly. Yeah. Mm. So it doesn't and, stop I mean, you. <laughs> yeah, we try not to let it stop us. I mean, it's it's not easy. Like mm. our family vacations sometimes will, you know, we'll go on an overnight hike with our mm. kids. Mm. And instead of going on a big, huge hike, mm. we might only get two miles. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, we might not go very far, but it's just the act of starting to get the kids outside and starting to get them moving and getting mm. them comfortable outdoors and, and, and getting us comfortable with becoming more patient and slowing yeah. down and, and taking that time to use our biology degrees and show them the forest and mm. show them nature and, and all the beauty that is in slowing down. But it's not easy all the time. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so so I, I believe that you will have um, some uh, maybe... Um, we students, when I say students, which is like customers or mothers who, who um, seek your advice. So would, um, would, do you have um, cases or students that, that had difficulties uh, keeping, the, keeping their workout consistent? And is there any way that you yeah. can help them to keep, keep that consistency? And uh, do you monitor or how, how, how do you like, because it's always hard to start. Definitely it's like when you start to work out, you'll feel all the aches and pain and, and people tend to give up and especially if let's say um, their, their kids are not cooperating and they feel frustrated and all that, how, how do you help them to overcome that? Okay, the first word there yeah. Yeah. is um, compassion, compassion, compassion. It's mm. teaching moms to be really compassionate with themselves. Mm. Like there, there is no such thing as failure. It's, it's really easy to start a workout and do it once and then twice and mm. then you missed a few days yeah. and I, it's really easy to get embarrassed or like not want to tell me and it's like <laughs> it's okay everything you do is okay like mm. it's okay to miss a day because it's important it's just as important to miss a day and find out that you don't feel as good or mm. that your energy isn't as good the next day like all of those little lessons that you learn mm. from either doing the exercise or not doing the exercise are really important so it's, um, my process is usually being with a mom for a month to three mm. months mm. and just continuing to walk beside them, like, and, and always compassion, just mm. like, it, it's okay. This is going to take a while. Any new habit and developing a new habit takes a while and it's not going to be perfect right off the bat. Mm. And it is really hard and it's really important to take rest days. So yeah. <laughs> just really working through the process, like we're going to start some days you're not going to make it we're, and we're, we're going to look for a new window to either put that workout in or we're going to take it off and we're going to call it a rest day and so what was going to be the rest day we'll now put a workout there but really helping moms understand that this is a flexible process this mm -hmm. is about them and eventually um eventually helping them figuring out like what is going to feel good in their week and that and that's what we're moving towards is is a, a client led exercise regime by the time we're finished wow but so basically but yeah definitely hand holding them hand holding them for a month to three months until it became a habit in them naturally definitely there will be struggle but you will be the um hand holding them side by side and, and really putting them is it good if, is it more of like like a face to face thing or you is always over a phone call or stuff like that so most of my work so far has been person to person. So mm. literally like going out and, and exploring the landscape, exploring their house, like being there with them in person. And I'm starting to just do a little bit more of this. Like as I'm understanding what moms need more, mm. it's getting easier for me to do this kind of communication. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, for the last two years, it's really been working with either groups of moms or, mm. um, or working with people one-on-one. -on -one. So we'll actually, I'll go with them and we'll go on walks and mm. we'll go for the hikes and we'll explore the area because there can be a lot of barriers. Like it can be scary to go into the forest the first time yeah. by, by yourself <laughs> or to go for that walk or 
or even to when you're starting to run and you're feeling your heart beat so hard and like, mm. are you about to have a heart attack or is this totally normal? And just making sure that um, all of those experiences, I, I can help guide them through those experiences until they're not so foreign anymore. Mm. Does, so, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. It, it does. Because it, it um, because I, I'm getting curious because um, how do you make sure that, that they could do it but because you you physically being there and doing the workout with them, and if let's say they uh uh to maybe to tour around their places or even to start off, uh to kick start them, so you you will be like doing the workout with them for that month or you as and when you feel that okay this mother can um can take off on 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 their own they can manage on their own, is that is that how you managed it? Good question. So what we'll do first mm. is um. Usually I'll give them a physical workout that they can do to do a lot of body strengthening. Mm. Um, so uh, hollow body holds from gymnastics or and squats. Like, so just a basic mm. um, full body workout. And, the... and then we'll figure out what, what the cardio piece is going to be. So mm. most people, I like them to have some basic strengthening and a basic cardio workout mm. that they're going to mm. love. And if they don't love, like if they think they're going to love running, but then they don't love running, then we might switch to hiking or mm. they might start hiking and then realize they really want to try running. So, <laughs> so we meet once a week and, and they get like a piece of the puzzle mm. and then the rest of that week, they're going to practice it. And we're going to decide how many hours do you think you can do? How long do you think you can do it for? When do you think you can do it? And we'll make a very basic schedule. And mm. what I'll say to them is, listen, if you do three more workouts this week um and i think it's going to work for you and between the two of us we'll decide when those times are most likely going to work for them and then it's their job to go try them to practice them on their own mm. three more times that week and then if there anything comes up there they get confused they can always contact yeah. me and say okay what like let's troubleshoot it mm. so and then i meet them back the next week and we do the next piece and we practice that together and then they might have the strength training from the mm. week before and then a new part of the cardio piece to practice that next week and again mm. it's like okay three more times this week can you do <laughs> it on your own and they and they you know and so it's just practicing learning something new mm. and then putting it into practice on their own and then i meet them again the next week and that's wow. that's how we do it and what's really cool is most of the time within three or four weeks mm. they'll come up with their dream like their mm. dream goal they'll be like <laughs> you know what i want to do a 5k and like their faces light up they're like i know what i want to do and and then we start working towards that specific goal like once mm. they get their own goal yeah then then we start working on that goal together mm. and that's i call that their wonder woman goal and that's the, the wonder woman that's nice. program, the three-month program and and usually moms will like, they'll figure it out. They'll mm. see that there's something actually that they either wanted to do in the past that mm. they didn't do, or it's something they used to do that they want to do again. Mm. And their whole face will light up and their whole, <laughs> it's like radiant. Like, it. <laughs> I know, I know what it is I want to do. And then, and then it really starts working. Then they're motivated mm. to do it and they want to do it. And it's, it's really easy after that. It's really neat. Because that's when the momentum kicks in and they feel confident and they feel that, hey, I can do all this basic stuff. I'm in that, that mode and I'm in that, um, that gear that I'm always ready. I'm ready for the next gear and stuff like that. Is that, is that, that kind of that's, feeling? Yeah, that's it. And the, you know, they go up and they sign up for the race or wow. they start planning the adventure. And like when mom, one of the first moms, this is early on, she has four little babies, like mm. four small kids. And her husband was going to take the oldest two. And they were going to hike nine miles into the back country wow. in Oregon. And she was like, you know, she was like, this is what he's doing. I mean, it's really crazy. And, and after a few months of the group training, she was like, mm. I'm going with him. Wow. And I'm like, you're going to take four babies, nine miles. And, and she did it. And she said wow. it was a life changing experience for the family. Mm. Like it, it was amazing. Yes, they did it. it. And they the experience and all that. Yeah, getting their kids out there and, and connecting to the land. And it was a multi-generational hike that the family wow. had done for generations. And so grandfather was there and aunts and uncles were there. And it was this really beautiful adventure that she realized she could do. 
Wow. Because it's that they are, they are, it, because fitness and, and, and healthy lifestyle is infectious. And when, when, when I believe that when you see them, they, they lead up and they tell you that, hey, Karen, I'm going to do this. This is my goal. They, they are in that Wonder Woman mode. And, and I feel, I can see that that, that, that really touches you. And uh, I believe that is one of um, your, uh, one of the moments that you feel um, there's a sense of fulfillment, right? When you see the mummy being transformed and they being more proactive and they even telling you that, hey, I'm going to do this. It, it, it gives you a very, very strong sense of fulfillment, right? Yeah, it's it's just a really beautiful thing because you you see it move through the whole family. It like the the kids are now getting out there and mm. and moms involved and um I I've, I've noticed for a lot of moms and and for myself it it helps with postpartum depression. It helps mm. with depression every day you get out there and like and just all those worries and all those things we carry on our shoulders. And I call it the backpack. Like <laughs> every day we, we have a backpack on, right? Like of, of yeah. worries and things that we have to carry around. And it's not physical. It's just, it's the stuff that we carry in the back of our heads. And, mm. um, and you can feel that when you go walking, when you try to go up a hill, like you feel that backpack. Mm. And, and so teaching moms that like, yeah, like you're carrying that, but, but um, after a while, you start understanding like, oh, like I'm worried about all this stuff. <laughs> and, and then you start like, because the blood's pumping, then you're like, and I can do this about that. And I could do this about that. And like, they start working through everything and they, and it's like, oh, okay. I know what I'm going to do. Mm. I know how I'm going to like fix all these things in my backpack and the backpack gets a little bit lighter mm. every day. Because they are and, clearer after all the exercise, they are more healthy and the mind is clearer because it, it's clear all, all the, Ne negativity or uh, maybe the things that is affecting them because now they are healthy they are clearer is that, is that yeah and, mm. and actually like literally solving the problems mm. like sometimes we'll be out there and they'll be like wait i know what i'm gonna do about that thing that's been bugging <laughs> me for and like a really clear plan emerges mm. like i just need him to do that thing and and then i think we're out of this thing that's been bugging me for a while and <laughs> so it kind of just... like uh, unlock everything that 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 uh, the answers to them right after they, they exactly. exercise and keeping fit healthy yeah and i mean there's there's actually scientific evidence hmm. that you know you can read about in the john rady book spark where you know as you start moving it, it creates more um, neurotrophic um growth factor in your, in your neurons which hmm. actually tells your neuron to produce most of that or mm -hmm. more more of the neurotrophic growth factor mm -hmm. and then all the hormones can start um flowing more evenly across your neurons and so it just helps you think better it helps you feel better <laughs> and it's it's not just a magical thing it's actually like a physical scientific mm. thing that's happening in your brain which is which but, is pretty interesting it's like it's like the uh, 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 old car being modified again with all the exercise and uh, with all the new engine and stuff and now that now the engine yeah. in them especially the brain the brain cells is working faster it's like the processor has upgraded after all the exercise that's exactly it yeah, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> what's happening as we start moving our bodies and and that, so that's why i think it's i mean as moms if we can't figure out this part if we hmm. can't figure out how to make ourselves um put movement into our lives every day um then we're not figuring that out for our kids and for our daughters, especially like, I don't want my daughter to have to go get a career, but mm. never be able to fit a healthy, active lifestyle into mm. that career and into her family, because then she's not going to be the full person that I, I yep. think you can be when you're moving. Mm, that's and good. that's, that's my basic motivation personally mm. is just modeling, figuring out like a lifestyle that's going to work for my family and, yeah. and to teach that to my children. Mm. And, and I, I think that's why this is so important to me. Yeah. And, and that's where, that's where balancing of uh, motherhood and also whatever that you're doing, especially your work is, is very, very important because with a, I, I guess with a clearer mind, with a healthy and active mind, because after working out, uh, it, it's better for you to handle and for you to balance, like you mentioned about the lifestyle, like what kind of lifestyle you're going to create and making it healthy. Because with a healthy mind, with a healthy body, you, uh, we are able to take care of our, our, our kids uh, for a long, long period of time. Because if us as adults, uh, we break down our bodies, we get sick easily, it's not doing any justice for our children. 
and it's not possible for our children to take care of us because uh, we are adults, we, we, we are there for them to really take care of them until when they are, they are old enough, we also have to, uh, that, that's where they may, may be able to come and take care of us. But I, I guess as, as parents, uh, it's always good to take care of ourselves first uh, before we can help others, which is also like you mentioned about self-love and also to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. I think it's a really hard thing to mm. be a mom and to say, I'm going to take care of me mm. um, because it feels selfish. Mm. But if we don't take care of ourselves, then it's next to impossible to take care of other people. Yeah. Because when you're running on empty, when you're sick, when your body hurts, how yeah. Well, are you going to take care of your kids? Yes. And, and especially as things start to get more stressful or when other people get sick, mm. like we've definitely had a times in our lives where, you know, my partner gets sick or, mm. or a parent gets sick yep. and now you're taking care of other people and your, your babies. And, mm. and how do you make sure that you're still standing yes. when, when hard things are happening or when mm. a kid gets sick? Mm -mm. So even though it, it seems really selfish to take 20 minutes or an mm. hour or like two hours mm -mm. and take that time and invest it in yourself. I think it's like to not do it is mm. a bit like not having an insurance policy. Yeah. Like you're just, you're just always paying out. And then eventually, you know, your bank account is empty right. Yeah. and life is not so good when you're, when you have no <laughs> money in your bank account, you know, she said like your health. Yeah. And when that's your health and your body, mm. it's, it's a real, it gets ugly fast. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and, and I, 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 I really like the part where you just um, pointed out, like a lot of mothers, um, and this is what I observed, I, I realized uh, among my friends, because I'm a dad, I have a nine-year-old daughter, and for my wife, uh, when, after giving birth to my daughter, because we used to work out a lot, but because my wife, she has some illness and she's not able to work out that much. But uh, at the same time, because she felt that it was selfish to give time for herself, like like half an hour or that one hour that she used to do, like she would go up, uh, go to the gym, she would do the treadmill and all that stuff to really uh, perspire and really to get all the, all the um, negative energy out and also the stress that she's having from work. But ever since she became a mom, she stopped having that because like what you mentioned, the mothers felt that they are selfish to, to, to have that one hour for themselves. But you also mentioned that if they don't take care of themselves in the event that they need to take care of other people, not, not just their babies, they need to take care of maybe let's say their own parents because their own parents are sick. So how are they yeah. going to juggle between their parents and the babies when they are not healthy? And how long can they do this? How, if, they, if let's say they do not have a healthy body. And now I would say that now my wife has been in a way selfish or I would be, I call it like self-love. She loves herself by giving herself one hour uh, once a week for her to really go to the gym, to, to, to uh, sweat it out and really get herself an active body so that she can perform better at work and also perform the, the duties that she wants to feel fulfilled as a mother. So you have touched a very, very strong point and I would want to, to share with all the mothers that um, this is an investment, right? Like investment is like building your own body. Your body is like the bank. You invest time on yourself and, and your health and wealth is just going up because with, with the health, you are able to uh, perform better in your work where you may get promotion and all that. It's not really selfish. And, and I like this analogy that um, someone shared with me, like, like uh, most of us have taken a flight before, like when there's an on-flight instruction, right? When a gas mask drop, right. yeah. And they, it, and they instructed like for parents, you need to put on the mask on yourself first before you put in for your children, which is the same case. Because the children exactly. do not know how to save themselves. The first thing is that uh, the parent, uh, the adult has to put on the mask to save themselves to breathe first during emergency. And then that's where you can help the children to put on the mask. And this is really important. And that's also drive the part where uh, it's not being selfish, it's really being practical and taking care of yourself first, invest in yourself, invest in your health. And, and that is really good um, that Karen, you have brought it out this, this point, which, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's hard. It, 
and so I, you know, there's even workarounds. So like, if you really can't leave your kids, we, we come up with ways of moving with kids. Mm -mm. So it's like, okay, if you, if you really, you're not going to go away and you don't want to take that time out. Mm -mm. Well, let's figure out how to bring the kids with us. There's lots of workouts you can do while your kids are playing on the playground. Yeah. Like <laughs> put the phone down mm. and go follow kids on a playground for an hour. Yes. It is hard work. Yes. Um, <laughs> I go to my kids' school and I play um, on Mondays. We I meet them at recess time, all the kids mm. in the school. And um, there's about 50 kids that come out and we play wow. tag for 50 minutes and it's one of the most intense interval workouts mm. like yes. I will run so hard to try to catch these little kids because little kids are great runners yes. like they are naturally beautiful amazing runners and so they can like a lot of them will just outmaneuver me outrun me but yeah. like just getting out with your kids like play those games play mm. tag play hide and go seek like yes. it is so much fun and they scream and they go wild and you'll wear your kids out which um, my son had a ton of energy. Like I had to wear him out and, and it was hard. He could ride six miles on a wow. 12 wheeled bike when he was three years old. Wow, That's, that's a lot of energy. Like, yeah, and if Fuck I didn't you. spend it that way, like he was almost intolerable. Like he would, he would run away. And, but if we could just exercise him enough, mm. then, then he was a great kid. He would sit down, he would play Lego <laughs> finally. And we're like, ah, Okay. You know, so just even if you don't want to walk away, you don't want to go to the gym, you don't want to mm. go for the walk with the kids, yeah. go for a little walk, let them ride their bikes, go to the mm. playground, play with them on the playground, yes. but, but move. Mm. But I also, like, I also really try to encourage my moms to take, take that hour at least a week to mm. be alone, to be quiet, to like mm -mm. work through anything that, that might be building up because mm. it's a hard job. There's. Yes. probably no harder job than being a mom you know yes. and when you add on everything else that like women try to we're all trying to do it all you know mm, yeah so we need we need time yeah. space yeah. That's, that, that's 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 really true and it's not easy because nowadays uh mothers are wearing a lot of hats they are do, uh, carrying a lot of different roles especially now and and you 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 have shared um a lot about them uh, being active with their children and i believe that that also uh that bonds them together to 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 really um create that that um that love that um that relationship with them and their children because and and you and and I like the part where you say that to ask them to put down their phone really go out there and play with their kids which is uh what like like locally I I see a lot of parents in the playground they were just on their phone their kids just let the kids. Uh, run around and stuff like that but they ha there are hardly any parents doing that but they're always complaining that they are oh, not healthy i'm not this i'm not active and i can't find time yeah but they always have time with their mobile phone and all that stuff <laughs> so I, I guess that that is really a good tip because um if they place the priority of bonding with their children that will be uh one of the greatest motivation for them to really to start to work out and stay active and stay uh, healthy at the same time yeah, I mean, you can do lots of fun things at a playground. Like, there's usually a bar to try, yeah. try to do chin ups or like just hanging from a bar mm. can be hard, or doing push ups on something that's like even standing push ups mm. or or just going like at waist height. And mm. I mean, it looks a little funny, but more often than <laughs> not, some mom up. will yeah. be like, "Hey, what are you doing? Like, can I try that too?" And you know, before. <laughs> So you, you need someone to really kick start and really get the hang of it. So Karen, is there any any tips, especially for for working moms, like the 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 one tip that they can integrate um like work out in uh, together with the children and stuff like that? Is there any one one uh tip or one exercise that they can do? Hmm. Well, I think all families hmm. can usually go for a walk together. Hmm. So. One thing we'll we'll do here in Oregon is it, mm. it gets dark at, um, in November and December. It gets dark really early, but there's Christmas lights up. So mm. we'll just go for a walk after supper and go look at the Christmas lights mm. around the neighborhood. Like mm -mm. if you can just figure out something that's fun that will you get everybody together. out the door. Mm. Mm. I think that's that's probably the simplest and the easiest place to start. The mm. next simple place is when you go to the playground, mm. move with them. <laughs> figure yeah. out some like 
tag just just follow follow a toddler on a playground mm. <laughs> uh try to climb up a, a fireman pole you know yeah it's not easy it's yeah, like really being but, a child again <laughs> It, there is no fitter humans on the planet than kids. Yes. So follow them. But, and I, I think that's the easiest way for, for people to start in the, and maybe the most fun and the most valuable um, for creating a lifelong multi-generational exercise pattern. Yes. Thanks a lot for that great tip. And um, time really flies and we're coming to the end of the show. I would really love, uh, love to have you to, to share more tips to be stay healthy to stay active and um but but uh, it's 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 really coming to the end of the show i would really want to maybe invite you on the next episode or the even the later episode for you to share something even more on the, the tips on how keep to keep healthy so um so how how uh, how does the audience or the mothers get connected with you karen so anyone can find me i've got um my website is called mm. mom fleets.com. Mm. Um, I offer 15 minute uh, consultations so we can find out if we're going to be a good fit and how mm. we might be able to work together. Um, I give talks. Uh, I've done talks at the university here for people returning to work. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's probably the best way to start in Facebook. Mom Fleets LLC. These are great mm. ways of getting a hold of me. Thanks a lot, Karen. So for those uh, mommies or the parents who are watching uh, this video, this, this show, uh, I will include the link in, in the comment section so that you can, uh, you can get connected with Karen and also to um, maybe uh, seek her advice on how you can um, have a healthy and active lifestyle together with your kids and integrate that into your lifestyle. And last but not least, Karen, any um, last advice uh, for the mothers out there? Uh, if uh, let's say for them to kickstart uh, um, their business or even to pursue their passion? You know, I think when we do what we truly love, um, that's when life really feels great. So I would say find your passion, follow your passion, mm. and, and just keep it, keep it going. Keep the flame <laughs> burning <laughs> always. You know, because that's, I think that's how we're going to raise a healthy next generation and mm. healthy people now. So, yeah, follow You're those right. passions. Yeah, right. Thanks a lot, Karen. Uh, thanks for Thank the, the great advice. And uh, before we end off the show, uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, every guest gets to ask a question of the day, posted out to the audience and also to the next guest. So do you have your question of the day ready? My question of the day. Well, let's follow up with the passion thing. What, mm. what is your favorite thing to do? If you had a time machine and you could stop time for an hour, what would you do with it? <laughs> okay. So um, how do I, what's the question again? Uh, what is the one thing in it? What's your favorite thing to do? If you had one hour to do anything you, you want, what would mm. you do with that hour? What's your favorite thing? that you want to do if you have that one hour one hour free kids aren't at the door no one needs you <laughs> <laughs> you've stopped time okay where do we have that one hour free time okay so the question of the day will be what is your favorite thing that you want to do when you have that one hour free time yeah, that's Very it. Good. Okay, so uh, I will be posting the question of the day in the comment section so that uh, for audience who are watching uh, the replay, you can uh, post your comments below, your answer below to share with us, to share with me and Karen. At the same time, uh, this question also go out to the next guest. So for the next guest, if you know who you are, uh, do watch, watch for this and um, do uh, get ready your question of the day. So last but not least, uh, thanks Karen once again for making time. Uh, it has been a really, really um, uh, fulfilling, fruitful uh, interview and really uh, nice to have you on the show to share uh, all these healthy tips and uh, how mothers can integrate, can also stay healthy and uh, active at the same time. So thanks a lot, Karen. Uh, thanks for your time. Um, really uh, all the best for your mission for for you to empower more mothers to keep them healthy and fit. So uh, Kenneth here signing off with Karen. Thanks for watching this episode. Thanks, Karen. Thank you, Kenneth. Thanks, Thank everybody, you. for listening. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thank you. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.